Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge of Love of Christ Lutheran Church in Mesa. And each week, Pastor Nanette Christofferson and I try to provide a brief introduction to two of the upcoming Bible readings for Sunday. So in our lesson for today, we're going to take a brief look at John chapter 1, verses 29 to 42. And that is our gospel reading for Sunday, January 15, 2022. Uh, just a lead into the gospel reading, a little uh, background. We start chapter 1 at the very beginning. And uh, John's gospel is a little bit different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, scholars believe Mark was the oldest gospel, uh, that Matthew and Luke had uh, a copy of Mark's gospel. And Mark's gospel is really kind of the testimony of Peter, Peter's account of things. Uh, and, uh, and John's, uh, is, is more of a, uh, spiritual love letter, uh, describing who Jesus is for the sake of the world. And, uh, John is, uh, is believed to be the last gospel written. Uh, and, uh, and so leading into this, uh, John doesn't have a Christmas story. And so we talk about the word of God, the logos of God, uh, is God. Uh, and so we get this clear identification at the very front end, John 1, that uh, Jesus is the Word of God, and the Word of God is everything that God wants the world to know. Uh, we hear in that early part of chapter 1, uh, the Word is the light of the world, and the darkness of the world cannot extinguish it. This is the hope. This is the good news that Jesus brings. Uh, we have reference to John the Baptist, though he's not called the Baptist. Uh, we have John uh, being declared as not the light, but as the one who bears witness to the light. And then we have the strong uh, affirmation of Jesus being Emmanuel. The word takes on flesh and dwells among us, God with us. We have Moses brings the law. But Jesus Christ brings grace and truth. And this is the good news that John wants the world, wants his readers to know, his listeners to know, that Jesus brings grace and truth. And then the acknowledgement that no person has seen God. It is God, the only Son, who has made God known. So if we want to know the God of the universe, the God who created everything, the God who creates us, John's going to invite us to, we need to know Jesus. We need to get to know Jesus, who reveals who God is uh, through him. Then uh, we have the debates. Uh, we have uh, people asking, is John the Messiah or the Christ? Because during this period of uh, time, uh, there's great expectations that something may be happening, and God's great promised Messiah in the line of David uh, would arrive because times were tough, times were difficult under the Roman Empire, and you had charismatic preachers and teachers like John the Baptist proclaiming that uh, the end is near, the time is near, the Messiah is about to uh, enter in. Uh, and so they're asking, well, John, are you the Messiah? Look at the crowds you're attracting. Look at the words you're speaking. Then the question is, is John the prophet Elijah back from the dead? Because one of the Jewish uh, understandings or expectations was that before the day of judgment, God's judgment upon the world, uh, Elijah would return. Uh, but then John, the gospel writer, makes it clear that John is a voice crying in the wilderness. Wilderness is a place of temptation. Wilderness is a place of preparation. And so John is in the wilderness preparing the way for the one who's coming after him. Uh, he's asked, why are you baptizing people? If you're not the Messiah, if you're not Elijah, why are you doing this? And John simply makes it clear that this is just part of the preparation for the one who's coming after me. Then we get to our lesson. And, uh, and for this video, I just want to affirm that in our gospel reading for this Sunday, we have four titles given to Jesus in, uh, in John 1, 29 to 42. We hear Jesus described as the Lamb of God, Jesus described as the Son of God, Jesus called a rabbi, and then we have Jesus called 
the Messiah, Christ, the Anointed One. So who is Jesus? And in the season of Epiphany, uh, that's the whole point of, of the unveiling, the uncovering, the revealing, that Jesus is the Son of God, God in flesh dwelling among us, the one who reveals God to the world. So the first description in our lesson is Lamb of God. And there's three biblical uh, references that most scholars think this might apply. First, we have the great story of, of Exodus and the Passover in chapter 12 of the book of Exodus, where we have uh, the people, the Hebrew people taking unblemished lambs, uh, slaughtering those lambs, uh, putting the blood of those lambs over their doorposts, uh, their thresholds and, and rooftops so that the angel of death can pass over them before the death of the firstborn of the animals and uh, Egyptians uh, is taken. Um, we have those lambs are also part of the Passover feast. Uh, and so we have this reference that Jesus is the one who allows death to pass over us. Jesus is the one uh, who gives up his life for the sake of the world, of saving God's people. Then we have a reference to Isaiah 53. Uh, it's one of the suffering servant songs in Isaiah. And in that reference, uh, we have the people of Israel, uh, the prophet, or a reference to Jesus. We don't know for sure. Uh, but speaking about uh, being sacrificed, being given up, being offered up uh, for the sake of the world, for the sin of the world. And in Isaiah 53, we get this reference to the expansive nature of the salvation offered uh, through the suffering servant. It's not just to Israel. It's to the world. And then, uh, and then some have even suggested that uh, the, the Jesus being called the Lamb of God is, is possibly a reference uh, to uh, the Lamb, or it was a ram actually in Genesis 22 when Abram is offering Isaac as a sacrifice in obedience to God, uh, trusting that God knows what God's doing when God had made a covenant that through you, uh, a nation will be formed and that nation will be a blessing to the world. But now God is asking uh, Abraham to sacrifice his first and only son, uh, for, not only son, but his only son through Sarah. And, uh, and then right at the moment before the sacrifice of Isaac, a ram in the bush is there offered up uh, to, do, uh, to do what um, needed to be done. So we have, we have uh, several uh, biblical references to a Lamb of God, and, um, and we move on to the next, uh, the next title, and that's Son of God. We hear, um, we hear this reference being made uh, that John was a witness to the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus at his baptism and declaring that Jesus is the Son of God. And then as you read through the Gospel according to John, you're going to see multiple I am statements. And so I have a little uh, graphic here that kind of gives you those and where they're found in the Gospel of John. But John includes these uh, to make sure his audience, his readers, his listeners know that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is uh, the one who reveals God to the world, to us. Then the next title is Rabbi. John identifies Jesus as the Lamb of God to two of his disciples. Uh, and, and so, again, some of us are shocked that John had disciples. John the Baptist had disciples. But uh, charismatic leaders and teachers and prophets, uh, they would have followers. Uh, and so in this case, John has two uh, that are nearby when he sees Jesus. And he says, that's the Lamb of God. And so hearing that, and hearing that from their uh, master teacher, uh, John the Baptist, they follow him. They want to learn from Jesus. Uh, as a teacher, Jesus does not seek uh, to just speak, though we know in the Gospels he does a lot of speaking, a lot of preaching and teaching. Uh, but Jesus invites any who follow him to participate. And that's a challenge in the church today. When we're called to make disciples and the majority of our people, we're just grateful they come to church. They worship. 
But how do we form disciples? By, by inviting them to engage not just in hearing the speaking of pastors, but by living out the faith, by coming and seeing and doing what Jesus did. Uh, so discipleship is not passive learning, where you just you know take a book, open it, read it, or you listen to lectures and maybe take a quiz and see how well you learned it. Uh, Jesus is not about that at all. Yes, there's involvement in you know confirmation instruction, uh, baptismal orientation, uh, the preaching and teaching ministry of the church. But the real learning for all of us happens not from us just listening, but from our doing. And our doing for Jesus' disciples is going to be by coming to him, seeing him uh, reveal God in our midst, the kingdom of God in our midst, the reign of God and will of God at work in our midst, and then participating in that, actively being agents of that as well. Discipleship is not passive. It is active participation. And then we have the title Messiah Christ. Andrew, Peter's brother, uh, was one of those two disciples that went after Jesus. And he's so moved, he's so excited about meeting Jesus. He uh, immediately goes back to Peter, finds Peter, and he brings Peter to meet Jesus. This is, you know, how evangelism works. Uh, when you and I are excited about Jesus, when we're excited about who Jesus is, we naturally want to share that with other people, uh, particularly people we love. So Andrew shares his love or his new insight and discovery about who Jesus is. And he says to Peter in verse is 40 to 42, we have found the Messiah. We have found the one we've been waiting for. We've found the one who God anointed to deliver God's people for the sake of the world. Uh, and so uh, we have these clear identifications of who Jesus is. And we see at the end here that Jesus is uh, in the line of David and he's there to liberate God's people. But unfortunately, we're going to see a tension because the expectations in Jesus' day and maybe even in our own lives is that we have an understanding of Messiah that isn't the reflection and revelation of Messiah that Jesus brings. Uh, and and uh, and so um, we have to be careful that we don't create a Messiah in the likeness or image that we want, but the one whom God reveals to us in Jesus. In conclusion, we hear titles given to Jesus to help identify who he is, but not to elevate Jesus. Uh, John wants his audience to know Jesus is among us as the word of God, as God in flesh dwelling among us, but it, God is accessible to us. God is able to be understood in and through Jesus, this invisible God being made visible. So Jesus invites his disciples to follow him, to come, to participate, to see, and to do what he does as the Lamb of God, the Son of God, the teacher of the way, the truth, and the life, and as God's anointed deliverer and Savior. That invitation is to you and me in January 2023, just as it was to Andrew and the other disciple of John who, uh, who went after the Lamb of God. Uh, so I hope you take away and you enter into this Sunday's worship understanding Jesus continues to invite us, but not into a passive learning experience, but into actively participating in the mission of declaring who Jesus is and God's will and reign is at work in the world today. God bless you as you prepare for worship this week. Take care.